Good evening, everyone. How are you? Thank you. So yeah, we're gonna continue on that theme. Uh, so it says here that we, we read in the tour last week that if you see that your wife is getting a little bit too frisky, so what does that mean? She's asking too much, you know, she's getting too demanding there, you know. So in a case like that, <clears throat> you said, right, you have to be a little bit firm, but but on the same time, if you see, right, that she's adorning herself and, you know, she's being romantic with you and giving you those signs, right, those goo-goo eyes, you know what I'm talking about, right? So if she's giving you that stuff, so then you have to try to please her, right? Even though it's beyond the measure that we talked about, right, the frequency that we talked about that the rabbi said, Okay, so once in a while, you know, she wants a little bit extra. So what? You should try to do that. Don't be so stingy, you know. Oh, well, we, are, we, are. we already did twice a week. I don't, I don't owe you anymore. Uh, come on, you know. <laughs> try to be a little bit flexible, you know. <laughs> so don't be so rigid. That's what we're saying, right? And then we said also, even if she's pregnant, right? Hey, you know, she's in the mood. She try to please her anyway, right? What difference does it make? She's pregnant, not pregnant. It's all the same. So he says, this comes from the Gemara in Psachim. And now what she said, right, that when she needs it, come on. Ken Perish Rashi Rashi explains, Sham Chayab Le Sameach Et Ishto Afilu Shelo Peshat Onata. So, right, he says, um, mm-hmm. uh, same thing Rashi, right, says the same thing, that you're obligated to, uh, right, uh, to, to to gladden gladden your wife, right, to give her joy, even if it's not her appointed time, you know? Like, don't be Mr. You know, Mr. Schedule, you know, it's not the schedule now. Yeah, but she's in the mood. So what? As we said, okay. So, ve'amina nami chayav adam lifkod et ishto b'shash yotzel derech afilu samuch lemesa. We also said, right, that um, you also should try to 
be with her before he leaves, you know, to go on the road. Right? Even if it's the appointed time, you know, for her period, right? It hasn't come yet, but it's supposed to come. So nevertheless, right, we say he should be with her. Uh, so what's the reason for that? Because, right, the, the, the Chazal say, the sages say, that when a, when a husband goes on the road, takes a trip, you know, so what happens is that, you know, the wife has like a desire for him. You know, uh, I guess it's some kind of an emotional thing, you know, whatever. So because of that, uh, you know, she's in the mood. Uh, so, you know, you got to be aware of that <clears throat> and act accordingly. <clears throat> Okay, good. So, um, right? So then we said, right? There's different um, different approaches to this, right? That we said. So one says, right? Uh, the time of the intercourse, he should seduce her, right? Okay. So, what does that mean, by the way? That means, you know. Be like extra, extra, you know, extra romantic, you know, be, you know, give her some encouragement, you know, words of encouragement, right? Make it special for her. That's the way he approaches it, Rabbi Eliezer. This whole thing, right? But according to this, according to this opinion, that Rashi explains, you're not really obligated to give her more than her share, just to make it more special. But then we have the other opinion, right? Rabbi Yoshua, so Rabbi Yoshua says, no, actually, you have to actually give her some extra, you know, since she's asking for extra, she's in the mood, so give her extra. Okay, this is not the appointed time, you know. All right, that's, uh, life is not a calendar, you know. Not, not everything is done with a calendar, you know. It's, you have to be spontaneous sometimes. That's the way it goes. So what do you see from here, by the way? The whole point is, you know, that the husband has to, you know, be in that state of mind, you know, that he wants to make his wife happy, you know? So what meaning that he's selfless, you know, he's a giving person. That's what the Torah wants from us, you know, to be like that. And by the way, I'm talking about both spouses, you know, the wife and the husband. When the wife is in the mood, the husband should try to please her. When the husband is in the mood... Also, the husband should try to, you know, the wife should try to please, please, please him also. So it goes both ways, you know, just we're looking out at one side, you know, but the flip side is also the same. We're going to talk about that, right, uh, sometime. <laughs> okay, so uh, the truth is, I posted about this already uh, from the words of the Rambam, you know, that he talks about that. That the wife should try, you know, to please uh, the husband, you know, uh, whatever he likes to do, whenever he likes to do. So what are we talking about? We're talking about, you know, when she's able to do that, or he's able to do that, right? Both of them. When they're not able, they're not able. Sometimes you're not able, you know, you don't feel good, you know, stomach ache, you know, whatever it is, right? You're not, you're not in the mood, you know, you're totally like totally. Right? So we don't expect you to make miracles, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, you got to give an effort. That's the whole point of marriage, you know? Having that... Dynamics, you know, of giving each other. That's the whole point. So if relation is not possible because one of them is sick, is the other um, obligated to, like, to take care of the sick person? <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's a different thing, right? We're, there, we're not talking about intercourse. We're talking about just, you know, right, uh, you know, the, the nursing department, right? <laughs> it's, still, that's... <laughs> it's, still part, it's still part of marital in intimacy, though, that you would... You know. uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. I got that. I get it. Uh, I, I see what you mean. But definitely, you know, you know what they say, right? There's a famous saying, right? Uh, kindness starts at home. But do I need to tell you anymore? <laughs> the, you know, if you can't be kind to your spouse, how can you be kind to somebody outside? You know, uh, turns out that you're fake, you're phony, right? You know, you're kind to other people outside. Why? Because you want to have a good reputation, have a good name, you know? But when it comes to the home, you know, so what What are you? You know, you're an autocrat, you know what I mean? You're a, you know, you're a dictator. That's not the way it's supposed to be, you know what I mean? 
If you can't be kind at home, that means you're not a kind person. Yeah. But, uh, need I say more? <laughs> you know, obviously, right? So, yeah, especially when a person is sick, you know, you got to make sure to, you know, to, to give that, uh, you know, kindness, you know, that, uh, right, that touch, you know, that, uh, that personal touch, you know, to make them feel secure, all those good things, right? To make them feel cared for, right? Uh, all that good stuff. Of course, that's what we want. Obviously. Okay, very good. Yeah, that's important stuff, you know, it's all important. Uh, you know. Um, okay, so um, you know we're we're obligated to be kind to all the Jews, you know, and all the more so your spouse. Okay, so we talked about on Tisha B'Av, right, visiting the sick and so forth and so on. Okay, so. Um, Good. Let's go on. So Rashi explains, right? According to Rabbi Yoshua, what it means is you got to give her extra if, if you see that she wants extra. You know? But as we said, right, there's a limit to everything. You know what I mean? If she wants five times a day, you know, tell her, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you're a reincarnation of a chicken, you know? I, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know? Like, uh, it's not exactly normal, you know? So... <laughs> I mean, maybe she she needs some therapy. I don't know what this. Okay, God bless. It's all good, all right? So uh, let's go to um, let's go to Shulchan Aruch. Right, so it goes over here some several things, right? First of all, as we said, right, that um, he brings you in the name of the Ravad, that a person is not allowed to look, you know, at the genitals, right, stare at that. Why? Because he has no shame, right? So he transgresses, right, certain things that he talks about here, which are not really prohibitions, by the way, you know, of these verses. You know, be humble, be, right, be uh, modest, so right, all these things are like more saintliness, you know. Uh, so nevertheless, the Shulchan Ruch here brings them. A person who has shame, he won't sin. Right, it says that the, the fear of God should be on your face. Shemot, kaf, Right, that's shame. Right, shouldn't sin. Also, he says when he looks at that place. You know, he he incites the Yetzahara, the evil inclination. The whole Shekin Shan of Shekham, all the more so if he kisses there. Shover al Panim, uh over al uh call el oh to say transgresses also, and also one more prohibition. Shover al Bas Shakatsut Nam Shotakem, right? He also transgresses to not to defile himself, right? So what does that mean? You know, it's not a clean place, you know? Right? So therefore, you know, like why are you defiling yourself, you know, by by kissing there? Okay. Uh, so this is Shulchan Ruch. Now, according to this, right, by the way, there are many Akronim who pask in this way. You know, several Akronim uh, that pask in this way. Um, you're going to find this in the Mishnah Bura and other Akronim also. Beratev, right, uh, and more. And more, right? So the question is, is this the Halakha? Right, so, well, you know, what am I asking, right? It's Shulchan Ruch, obviously it's Halakha, right? But it's not so simple. Why? Because, right, if you know... Uh, if you're a you know savvy halacha person, if you're a savvy, so you know right that there's also an identical chapter to this chapter in Eben Ezer, different part of the Shulchan Ruch. Right, uh, he gives you pretty much the identical material that he gives you here. It's interesting, by the way, to ask you know why does he go over it twice? I don't know. Maybe it's because to remind you, right? That's very important. <laughs> Could be that's the reason why. <laughs> Not really sure, but. 
Anyway, right? Why would you need it twice, right? Whatever. It is what it is. Anyway, so uh, right uh, over here, he's stringent about this, you know. But over there in Eben Ezer, he doesn't write this halacha. You know, uh, you know. So the question is, right? What happened? You know, did he have a change of heart over there? <laughs> right. So the truth is that, um, and the Rama also brings the other opinion, right, which is the Rambam who allows these things, you know, oral sex, whatever, right? All these issues. So, over there, right, we see that the Rambam is the king. Over here, we see the opinion of the Ravad, you know? So then, what do we make out of this, right? We have a we have a contradiction here. You know, inside the Shulchan Ruch, Bet Yosef kind of thing. So what do we do with this? Right? What's the bottom line? What do we do? Uh, so, the truth, truth is, right, you you know this is a, I'm teaching you guys now. Go, you're getting a gold mine over here with this this class. You know I don't know any other class you're going to get these kinds of things. So the question is like this: When there's a contradiction, right, in a certain posik, in the Rambam, Shulchan Ruch, whatever it is, right, one place it says like this, another place says something else. How do we paskin? Anybody have an idea? That's two out of three, right? No, but here we're not talking about two out of three. We're talking about the book itself. You know what I mean? The later authority, no? I'm sorry? The later authority, no? In the Shulchan Aruch. We're talking about one authority. You understand? In other words, the same guy, Shulchan Aruch, right? Same guy, Rambam, contradicts himself. You get my point? So what do we do in a case like that? The majority what people practice already. So, okay, you guys are giving some interesting answers, but... The real answer, you know what it is? Um, I'll give you a couple of tips over here. These are important tips you should know, right? So here, we use the chronological rule. You get my drift? So whatever he passed in most recently. Right, exactly. In other words, whatever was the last psaq that he gave, the that becomes Allah. I'm sorry? The batan, the batan. We are always talking right, so about we're not talking about we're not talking about the, the, the rabbi who's the batra. He were talking about the lesson, which is the batra, the last okay. lesson. Okay, I, I see. Right, I see. we call that we call that mishnah chrona, right? The last mishnah, right? Also, in the Talmud, by the way, you find this right contradiction in two mishnayot, right? One mishnah says like this, one mishnah says something else. So we go like the last mishnah. So it will be Mishnah, and you say another word. Can, can you repeat the second word? Mishnah what? Akrona, right? Which means the last. Okay, thank you. Right? So why do we go like the last one? So the answer is because we assume, right, that he changed his mind. You know, first he started out, right, in, in left field, but then he finished in right field. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he, so that means, right, that first of, at first he thought like that, and then later on he had, a, he had a change of heart, you know, and he said something else. So according to that, right uh, here, which one was written last? Or Achaim or Ebenezer? So obviously, right, Or Achaim is the first one, right? Ebenezer is the last. So over there, so therefore, Halakha is going to be like Ebenezer, right? Which means that these things are allowed. That's how it comes out, right? Um, there's also another interesting thing here, right? These are all gold mines over here I'm giving you, right? Treasure, treasure, treasure chests, right? There's also another thing, which is that usually, right, when there's a machloket between the Rambam and the Ravad, how does the Shulchan Ruch go? Right? The, obviously the Rambam, right? Because it's a big three, right? So usually, you know, most of the Shulchan Ruch is verbatim the Rambam copied over. Did you did you know that? About 80%. Okay? So so therefore, right, uh, the Maran Shulchan Ruch, he weighs the Rambam more heavy than any other posek. Um, <laughs> well, uh, what do you call it? Uh, and by the way, also you see that in his other book, which is called Avkat Rochel, you know, it's a chuvot of the of Maran Bet Yosef. So he writes over there, 
in Siman Lamed Bet, right? Lev, 32. Chapter 32, he writes there, Rambam Hukdola Poskim. You know what that means? The Rambam is the biggest posek that there is. Nobody bigger than the Rambam. So, therefore, right, uh, you see, right, that here, he wrote like the Ravad over here. And then afterwards, right, he, you know, he did not write like this. So, we have to favor the Rambam because, just because of that. You know, the fact that the Rambam has more weight than the Ravad. So, because of those two reasons, uh, right, we have to go uh, like the, um, uh, like, like the latter opinion. The last Mishnah, Mishnah Chronam. So, there's also other things involved here. When I was in Yushalayim, I had a friend there, you know, who was a big, big rabbi, big chacham, and uh, right, um, and uh, he was writing a book, you know, about halakha chuvot, right? Question and answer. So he wrote about this topic, you know, about oral sex, you know, whatever. So he also concluded like that, you know, after all the deliberation that he did, that it, it is allowed oral sex, uh, you know, because of all the reasons we mentioned, and probably more, that I don't remember all the reasons that he wrote there. But uh, I haven't seen that book in uh, 15 years. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so whatever it is, right? Anyway, the point is that, uh, you know, uh, that's the way it seems. Also, there's another way to reconcile here the contradiction. As we already mentioned last week, which is, what we're going to say is, you know, that if you don't have a desire for oral sex, better to stay away from it, because it's a, it is a machloket, you know? Don't get involved. I mean, uh, because, you know, you always want to be on the safe side, right? If possible. But if a person has a desire for oral sex, you know, because as we said, right, he grew up that way, Western culture, blah, 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 right? He, he saw some things, you know, right, on the, on the, on the videos, right? He got into it, whatever, you know, he got, he got into it, whatever, from experience, so because of that, he's into it, you know, it's like a thing for him, right? Uh, so then, you know, probably it's better for him to be lenient, because if he doesn't, if he's not going to be lenient, you know, uh, then he's going to feel, like, deprived. And that's not a good thing, you know, you want to be satisfied. Uh, so if you feel deprived, probably better to be lenient, you know, go like the Rambam. <laughs> that's what I can tell you, right? So, you know. There are, there are, you know, so, so in other words, we can reconcile like that, right? One is talking about if you don't have a big desire, then better to be stringent. But if you have a big desire for it, whatever it is, then you can be lenient because really the halacha is like the Rambam. Um, there's also another thing, right? Let's get into more, right? I'm getting that, you're, you're getting me started, right? You're getting the juices flowing over here. There's also another reason why the halacha is like the Rambam. Because if you look at the Talmud, right, where it talks about this, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Nedarim. Uh, so over there, right, um, it definitely implies the wording there, like the Rambam, not like the Ravad. So in other words, in order to pass like the Ravad from the Talmud, you need to like force the Talmud, you know, like squeeze, you know, like you, know, you have to you have to squeeze it out. It's not the it's not the, it's not the simple meaning of the Talmud. You have to force it, you know, it's very forced. Uh, so that's also another reason why the halakha is not like, not like the Ravad. Because the simple meaning of the Talmud is like the Rambam. Clear as night and day. Uh, also, there's another thing, which is that, um, what do you call it? Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It'll come back to me. So, anyway, right, the point is, Allah has, Allah has like the Rambam, but you know, for the for the people who want to have no desire for these things, right? They were born pure, you know, and right, uh, clean. They don't have any desire for these crazy things, for those kinky things. So then, uh, be stringent, you know. Why not? You know, go go the stringent way. That's the, that's the better way. That's the preferred. By the way, the Rambam says that too. That it says even though it's allowed to do these things, but. You know, if you want to be pious, you know, you should be stringent as a measure of piety. So if you're on that level, you know, to do that, go for it. So what does that apply to? That applies to anal sex, right? As we said, uh, you know, 
so in other words, you shouldn't ejaculate, you know, like that in the right there. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, as we said, right? Even the Rambam allows it, but not to ejaculate there. Uh, so that would be also what, one of the things that we talked about. Um, and also we would have the issue of looking at the genitals, you know, or, or you know, kissing the genitals, all kinds of things like this. Uh, this is the machlokat between the Rambam and the Rabbat. Another reason, by the way, why we should pass like the Rambam, here's an interesting thing, right? You know that the Rambam has the work, right? Mishnah Torah, right? Which we, you know, that's where the halachot are. So the interesting thing is, right, that the Ravad over there argues with the Rambam whenever he, you know, feels that he's mistaken. So over here in this halacha, he doesn't argue with the Rambam there. So where does he argue with him? And he has a book called Bala Nefesh, right? And the word Bala Nefesh, you know, is more like uh, above the halacha, you know, it's more like piety, you know? So that's another indication that the halacha they met is like the Rambam. There's many reasons why, you know, the... That's the way. That's the way it is. Okay, so I think you got the point, right? We we got it straight now. Okay, very good. So let's go on. We're going to going to Rabbi. Yes. Um. So I said, so why is the oral allowed for the man but not the woman? Like it's the same idea. Ah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well. Yeah. You got a good question. So what's the answer to that? Um, the answer is right that when it comes to the man, uh, when it comes to uh, when it when it comes to the man, right? The um, here's the thing, you know, there's some deep things involved here. So how did uh, before I answer your question, how did you understand right that the man is not allowed to do it and the woman is? That's how you understood it. I'm sorry, I I missed what you said. Did you understand that the man is not allowed to do it and the woman is? Is that what you understood? Yeah. Okay. So the truth is, you know, this is one of those things, you know, it needs to be discussed a lot. Your question has a lot of a lot of explanation here. But try to make it short. I'm not gonna make it too long. But here's the thing, right? That um the truth is there's also kind of a problem, you know, uh for the woman to do it as well. And uh, I'll explain to you why that is. Uh, so the reason is because it could cause him to ejaculate, you know, outside. And that would be, you know, wasting seed. So because of that, you know, the truth is it's better for the woman not to do it also. But isn't uh, wasting seed, yeah. um, isn't wasting seed only if he doesn't want her to get pregnant? Um. Isn't that supposed to be in his that's mind? According, yeah, that's according to the read, but, but but not according to the Rambam, not according to the Zohar, not according to the Bet Yosef. So there is an opinion like that, yes, but the, the Bet Yosef, Shulchan Aruch, doesn't pass like that. That's the interesting thing, right? So therefore, uh, right, uh, there is also an issue with the woman as well. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you, by the way, very simply. Prove it to you so simply we already learned this halakha, you know, somewhere, some, somewhere along the line, right? Uh, I think it was with you guys we learned it, that a man, right, when he's urinating, he's not allowed to touch him, you know, his member, right, when, he's, when he urinates, especially the crown. You remember we talked about this? I don't know, if you, did you guys ever hear me talk about it? So anyway, yes. the point is, yeah, I'm sorry. I never heard it. I'm, okay, first so anyway, thing. he's not allowed to touch, you know, there. Uh, you know, his... his his member, he's not allowed to touch it when he urinates, especially the crown. Depends on if he's married, he's not married, all kinds of things like that. But the point is, right, that if you're not allowed to touch yourself when you're urinating, right, all the more so, women shouldn't have oral sex like that because that's even more prone, you know, to make you to make you have, you know, uh, waste, waste your seed. You know what I mean? So you can see from there, right, that there is a problem there. Uh, but what can I tell you? You know, I didn't say it was forbidden, but uh, what I'm telling you is that the truth is, if, if people don't have a desire for this, better stay away from it. If you're, you know, you, if you grew up in the Western world, you know, and you're used to these things, so as I said, you know, there's room to be lenient. 
That's Rev, I, I, have a, I have a question. Yeah, Dave. Uh, does the porn industry know about these laws? You think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I'm the that, that's that's a, that's a hot potato. What you threw at me now? You threw at me a hot yeah. potato there. <laughs> I'll have to ask Ron Ron Jeremy, but he's in prison right now. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fumble that one. That hot potato. <laughs> that hot potato you threw at me there. Oh, oh okay. my god! <laughs> it's too it's hot to such touch. an embarrassing subject that I had to lighten it. You know. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Yeah, you know, make light of it. God bless you. All right, so that's the story there, right? Let's go to Hey. We're going to Hey. Uh, okay. So, okay. For, for, first, we got to do the um, two back yourself here, and then we'll go. We'll come back to this. Let's go. Yeah, it looks like there's no big yourself here, but probably there's a tour. Okay, so we'll look at the tour. Right, so it says the two like this. Karasina Masikat Kala. It says in Masikat Kala, right? Who lemata the he lemala, right? Zut derech azud, right? So if right, they they switch positions, you know, the woman is on top and the man is on the bottom. So this is called azut, right? What does azut mean? It means like um, that brazenness, right? So what does that mean? That it's going to inculcate that quality into the child. You know, uh, who was born from that union? You know, uh, so these the ones that we're discussing now are not as severe as, as the ones we discussed last week, because those, as we said, right, those are very big, you know, red line, you know, kind of like things, you know, where you know these are deal breakers over there. But these are not deal breakers, right? They're not as severe as those, uh, but they also come some they cause a some kind of a blemish in the child, right, in his, in his character. So, especially a person who's having a child, right, should should try to avoid these positions. You know, so what's the best position to having a child? Missionary, right? Hands down. Rabbi, um, yeah. Uh, previously, in one of your shorts, you had mentioned that having um, sex from behind, and and I'm thinking anal sex, uh, the child will be born. Um, with with a blemish, I think. Right. Uh, so if, if it's anal, you know, she won't get pregnant, right? So there's nothing to talk about with the child, you know, right? She won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's not going to get pregnant from that. So uh, it yeah. when the child is born uh, gay, uh, I I believe with no no you didn't, ooh, you, ooh, didn't ooh. That. you said with the if it's a man, it will be born with the soul of a woman. If it's a girl, it will be born with the soul of a man. If, oh, okay. Uh, this I don't remember. I don't remember saying these things. Uh, so I'm not really sure what you're. Maybe it was somebody else who said this. I I never said it because I'll tell you why I never said it because I never saw it anywhere. <laughs> so uh, you know, so I'm not gonna start making up things, you know, from the sky, whatever. Right? I'm just telling you what it says in the books. Okay. <laughs> I'm not embellishing anything here. You know, no embellishments, right? So anyway, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, we David, right? Me and David were musicians. You know. So we call that impro improvising, you know, improvisation. I don't improvise, you know. Uh, you know, in music you can improvise, but not in Torah. <laughs> in Torah, you have to say say it as it is, you know. That's it. <laughs> that's like, yes. Okay, right. So anyway, right. Let's get back to what we're talking about. I want to make the point here. So anyway, right. Uh, as we said, um, so if you're if you're if you're having children, right, try to do try to do missionary. This is the best according to whether it's halakha or the Kabbalah. Both of them. 
So that's what you want to do, you know, if you're having children. But let's say if your wife is already pregnant, you know, so you're not you're not having children, right? She's already pregnant. So there, there's more room to be lenient with these positions, you know. There's there's definitely more more leeway. Or let's say you know the woman is uh, you know mass, past menopause or whatever it is, right? She's not gonna have children anymore. So there, there's more room to be lenient. But when it comes to having children, you want to do missionary, right? That's what you want. <laughs> so. What's the reason for that? Let me try to explain to you what the reason is. Because uh, the truth is, you know, the man is supposed to be on top. That's one thing, right? Why? Because he's the leader of the family, you know? It's just, uh, you know, the way the, that's the way the family is supposed to be. That's one thing, right? The other thing is that, um, uh, besides that issue, right, there's also the issue that... Um, If the woman is on top, right, there is less chance of, of impregnation, you know, because of the fact that the sperm will not, you know, go in. So, you know, because of the gravity, right, the gravity will keep it down. It will it'll, it'll keep it from going in properly. That's another issue, you know, which that causes. But besides that, right, uh, there's also the, um, the woman, you know, is acting in a brazen manner. Why? Because she's taking the leadership, you know, as if, you know, whatever. And so it's like brazen from her vantage point, you know? So this causes something in the child, you know, which makes the child brazen. That's what he's trying to say. You know, it's, 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 it's an improper mode of thought there going on, right? So uh, that's why, you know, when you're having children, but what I wanted to say is like this, right? The Zohar says something also else there. And now we're going to get back to what you just mentioned, right? A couple of minutes ago. Going to get back to that issue. Which is that um, the Zohar says the proper way, you know, to have intercourse is to be facing one another. You know, the the right the partners should be facing each other. Why is that? Because that forms a good connection, right? A good, you know, it's a strong connection. But when you come from to the woman from behind, right? Even if it's not anal, just it's it's not anal. But you know what they call doggy style, right? That's what they call it, right? In the uh, right uh, in the you know street language, right? Whatever, right? So because the dogs do it like that, you know the animals, right? So when you do it like that, you know the problem is that you you don't have facial connection. So even if it's a vaginal intercourse, you know not anal, but still, right? According to the Kabbalah, there's a problem there uh, because there's no facial connection, and because of that, right? There's some kind of disassociation between the partners, right? and that's not good for the child, you know? It causes the child to be, causes a, is a blemish in his character. He doesn't have the proper outlook, you know, the proper, you know. So, well, Rabbi, you can, you can, a man can always ask her to look, look back. <laughs> well, you know, she's going to have to be, she, not everyone is so flexible like that. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I wouldn't I rely on that. I wasn't trying to be funny this time. Right, I got you, but it is funny yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. It is funny. <laughs> David, you're so funny. Even when you're not trying to be funny, you're funny. I know, that's that's <laughs> what they tell me. <laughs> that's what they tell me. In okay, God bless you. God bless you, David. So anyway, right, yeah. uh, as we Rabbi, said... <laughs> Rabbi, is this less, less important if you're... Um... At a time when a woman is not able to get pregnant, or like right. So as we said, when you're not having children, you know, uh, there's room to be lenient with these things, with the positions, you know. Definitely, there's room. You know, there's also another thing, you know, which I have to tell you. I can tell you this from per personal experience. Okay, I don't want to talk too much, but but the problem is like this: when a woman is pregnant, okay. Uh, because, you know, her uterus is like kind of like full, you know. So what happens is that, you know, you can't penetrate too deep at that point, you know, because if you do, you're going to hurt her. You're going to like, you're going to like, you know, bash on her uterus, you know. So that's why, you know, sometimes it's better to use a position uh, which is not missionary because missionary goes very deep. You know, so when she's pregnant, sometimes you want to avoid that because you can like, you know, you can hurt her like that. 
You get my message? Mm. We, were hoping to, we were hoping to hear about your sex life, Rabbi. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm telling you in a very roundabout way, you know, because you know I have, I can't uh, you know I can't get into a. <laughs> did you did you want to see the video, Dave? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't show you that. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> you're funny. So anyway, right, that's the story there. So um, yeah, so these things are important to understand, you know. Um, so let's go to right. To, I think there's a little bit more here, but we should talk about also several positions here, right? Which are um, what about side by side, right? So he says ikesh. Right? That's also not 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 so good, you know. Uh, ikesh means like crafty, you know. So it makes the child a little bit crafty. We don't want him to be crafty. We want the child to be straight, right? Honest, honest Joe, right? Not that Joe, the president. No, he's not honest, right? Not that guy. <laughs> Just the opposite. <laughs> right, so we want, you know, so therefore, right, we don't want this kind of position. Also, as I said, you know, that's when you're having children, right? That's what we're talking about. These things, you know? Um, right, so says the Ravad. Uh, okay, anyway, let's go back to Pet Yosef here. Good. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, there's no bit yourself. We're going to Shulchan Aruch straight. Straight Shulchan Aruch. Right, so says Shulchan Aruch, um, he, who le mata, he le mala, as we said, right? If he is, you know, if she's on top, right? Let's put it this way, right? Derek Azut. So this is like, you know, arrogant, right? Whatever, brazen, right? Shimshu, Shneem Kechad. If they, you know, if they're side by side, right? Zot Derek Akikesh. This is like crafty, right? Uh, so you know you get the you get the message if you look if you think about it what this means. It's a little bit hard to understand a little bit, but but uh, it means that it'll you know make that quality in the child. So you don't want these things, right? You don't want your child to be like brazen or crafty, right? So therefore, right, uh, you want it to be a straight shooter, as they say, right? Straight ahead. Okay, so that's the story there. Very good. Okay, so I guess we'll stop here, Brother Hashem. We'll continue next time. Thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. Hazaku Baruch, Lala Tov. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh El. Time for Teshuvah. Now we have to do Teshuvah. God bless. Thank you so much, Kabbalah. God bless.